Am I sounding okay? Yeah, we can hear you. All right, good. All right, so um, we're getting into the last part of this course. So um, let me just uh, uh, show you on the calendar. All right, we're gonna cover chapter four. We'll start today. And it's all about logarithms and exponents. So, um, hold on a second. So um, we got uh, about two weeks, a little bit more to cover that, review and have our test, last test before uh, Thanksgiving holidays. And then after the Thanksgiving holidays, we got a week of, we can review for the exam. I've tried to plan this out so um, that we can take full advantage. Is the exam cumulative? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, cumulative exam. All right, so uh, let's get started on this because like I said, I want to make sure we go through it rather, um, with, you know, taking our time if we have one section for each one of the days, it'll be a little bit more pleasant and slow. And uh, I'm hoping that I'm, they're gonna get us into this new office soon in the new building, but because uh, things just don't work very well over here and everything over there hopefully will be fresh, but they're, they're just now putting in computers, so. All right, so let's get started on the, the stuff. I was just trying to see if we can get to who's here. All right. So the first thing is exponential functions. All right, an exponential function basically is f of x is equal to b, where b is the base, brought to some power. And we could also say y is equal to bx. All right, now b is a, po is a positive con uh, constant other than one. So b has got to be rate greater than zero, not equal to one. And then of course, x is going to be a real number, okay? So let's look at this first exponential function. It's, this is just an evaluation of one, um, which is kind of the easy thing, the easiest thing to do with most of them. But we've got a function that says f of x is equal to 42.2 times 1.56 to the x power models the average amount spent, and that's what f of x or, y, or the output's gonna be, the y, the old y in dollars at a shopping amount, uh, shopping mall after X hours. And then they just ask us, what is the average amount spent to the nearest dollar after three hours at a shopping mall? Well, it's really pretty simple. X, they said, is the amount of hours. So we put in X for, um, as three. And then just to kind of show you what's going on, uh, the kind of the problem is, with the calculator. I guess most of y'all are using that um, one from 097.
Oh, that, one. that one's too complicated, and I don't think it's technically supposed to be used in that one, but I was just trying to use a basic one because they're all pretty much the same. Here we go. All right, so the way I would handle this is, is I would just, um, you got this thing, the x to the y function. So let's say 1.56 x to the y. So you're going to put in the three, and then that gives you this part, the part to the right. And then you can say times 42.2. .2. All right, so that gives us approximately 160. That's what the little squiggle means. So it would tell us that at the shopping mall, a three hour spree would be about $160. All right. Now, what does the what does a graph look like? Well, Well, what they're going to do is just pick points around zero, all right? It's really pretty simple. And uh, they pick, uh, they give us this one three to the x power. So that's what we'd call base of three. And then the x is going to change. So they just put values around zero. I would have picked one more and put two, positive two also. But positive two is going to get real high. But watch how most all of these functions are going to work when the base is that whole number there. So when we put in negative two, remember the negative sign takes the reciprocal and then we square it. So that's one ninth. And so for at negative two, this little value right there is, is the one ninth. So it's getting very, very, very close. And it's just gonna get closer and closer and never get there. So if you put in numbers like negative 10, it's gonna be a very, very, very small fraction but it'll never, never get down to zero there because it's never gonna to touch that line. Now, all functions that, well, um, let's go to zero. All functions, exponential functions, if we put in zero for the exponent, give us a value of one. So all exponential functions are gonna go through that point. All right, so then when you put in three, I mean, negative one, that just takes a reciprocal and leaves a three, so one third. All right, that's what this one is right here. See, it's not quite as close as the one nine, but it's getting closer. And then they put in um, the one, which is just gonna be three. And if we were to put in two, it would be nine, which would be up here somewhere. So all the exponential functions have this basic, kind of shape. They come out on that asymptote, getting very close on the left. They'll go through zero, one, the y-intercept, and then they'll get higher fairly quickly. So they'll all have that shape. Now you can use that point right there, the zero, one is kind of how you would um, transform it, all right? In other words, that right there is zero, one, and then we had one, three, and negative zero, one. This was the horizontal asymptote, x, y is equal to zero. So if we translate, in other words, I'm sorry, transform. So in other words, if we fiddle with the x now, remember, that's going to be left and right shift. So that negative one right there to, that's subtracted from the x, that means a shift to the opposite side of the negative. So that would mean positive one. So this thing right here is gonna go over one and be right there. Okay, that's the only shift that there is. They're not making this section too rough. 
Let's see, there's the shift of one from the black to the red. All right, other than that, it's pretty much the same. Okay, now, instead of being zero, one, it's one, one. And instead of being uh, one, three, it's two, three. So everything gets shifted over one. The zero, one third, from the negative one to one third. So everything shifted over one on the X, positive blue. All right, so this is just another thing to remember that when you've got the one, like the one we just looked at, it's the blue one, but if you've got a fractional amount, in other words, that's what it means when it says between zero and one, that that means that it's fractional, then it flip-flops like this, okay? Just a mirror image on the Y. All right, now one of the most important things is this thing called, well, this is just telling me what I was telling you here. Um, the domain is always going to be, and this is true for just about every function, the domain of a function is always, when I say function, I mean that it's actually a function and not just a relation that the domain is always negative infinity to infinity because you're looking at only the x-axis so this thing is just going over and over and over and over all the ways it possibly can to the left, which is negative infinity. And then on the right, it's getting higher and higher and it's just gonna cover up the positive side. Okay. And then, uh, as I had said, is for um, a base greater than one, it's going to just go up just like the one we just looked. If it's between zero and one, in other words, it's fractional, then it flip flops around like that. All right, now the thing that's different, and remember in both cases, it never touches the um, x-axis, that's the horizontal asymptote. But just remember, now this is going to be the one case when we talk about next time about the logarithmic functions. The logarithmic functions never Okay, it's recording. I was afraid I had to turn on the record. Um, the, uh, the logarithmic, it's the inverse, but it's a function as well. But we're not going to talk about that today. We're going to just look at these principles and then we'll go through some problems from the book. All right. Now, the natural base E is very important in modeling things in not just mathematics, but in science as well, in many areas of science, because it mimics the, um, the behavior of many things that exist, well, naturally, for no other better word. Now, when you see this little thing E, see, it's a repeating decimal. It says approximately equal to. So, what, what is going to happen then is as this number gets higher, like a, if you put in uh, one here and then just keep on going, it's going to get closer and closer and closer to this value. Like, for example, let's see, does this calculator have one? I know it does, but. I'll just, I'll just show you on this. I think this other one's got it. There's, there's one calculator that I know I was doing in my other class and it had the E on it, where you could just say, okay, well, here we go. Oh, you can only see it when it's bigger. Okay, so.
better. So see, if I just do e to the one, in other words, it's uh, that's just to the first power, then you can see how far out it goes. And that thing never ends. It's a repeating decimal. It's an irrational number. So it just keeps going on and on and on. And that's kind of what this tells us is the more times we expand it out with numbers there on the end, then it's going to get larger and larger and larger and larger. Just to kind of show you, if we put in one on that, so one and then one over uh, one is just, oh. Two. And then we take that to the again, where's it? Oh, here we go. See, that's how it starts out too. And then if we did two, if we put in a two for it, so that's one plus, and then one over two would be point five. Oops, what happened? One plus one over two. So one plus, I'll tell you what, I'll do it backwards. One divided by two plus one. And then we're gonna take it to the second power. There we go. See, it's starting to go out further and further. And we could do the same thing with three. So it would be, one divided by three plus one. And then we're gonna take that to the third power and see, whoops, what happened? So one plus point three, 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 whoops. I don't like the mouse for some reason. Oh, that's how you get rid of that word. 1.3333333. All right, and if we raise that to the third power, see how it starts taking out that shape. Now, um, we can put four and it's going to get closer and closer. So that's what that, what that comes from, that that value is 2.718, blah, 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 on and on. And the best way to do it is on your calculator, you've got that I'll put this so it's on here. I thought I'd been using this in this class. But if you ever need to have the va a value, pin the test bar, there we go. Then what you would just do is just take one and take to the E and that will give you the value from the calculator. This is just, just showing you theoretically how that it's generated. And the more accurate, you know, the more uh, decimal places you have, the more accurate it is. All right, so base E is gonna be a very important one. You're gonna see it over and over. And we'll also see when we see the logarithms, there's the opposite, the, um, the natural logarithm. All right, it says the exponential function f of x is equal to 1145e to the power of 0 0.3, 0 0.0325x models the gray wolf population on the Western Great Lakes. And f of x, the output f of x is however many years after 1978. So it asked us to project the gray wolves population in the recovery area in 2017. All right, so we gotta figure out what X is, okay? We can't just throw in 2017. So we gotta take 2017 and then subtract One nine seven eight 
All right, so we're going to have X is equal to 39 years because 2017 is 39 years after 1978. So what am I going to do here? Well, I got to use my memory here because I'm going to take in and put 39 times, and I got to put in 0, 3, 2, 5. Okay, so there's going to be my exponent. And I'll put it in the memory there, right? That's usually the best way to do it, in my opinion. Now, we're going to take E. And again, the way this thing works, I got to make it bigger. If you got a, the regular calculator, then you can just do it. So we got to take E to the memory recall. So that gives us 0 0.04119375. Let me make sure I did that right. That doesn't look right. Because this, I'm doing it on the calculator so you can see it. For some reason, the mouse doesn't like it. All right. So 0 0.0325 times 39. Let me make sure I got that right. Okay, that's right. So now we're going to do E. Okay, there it did it. Okay, there we go. So I knew it should have been bigger. Times 1145 is equal to 4066.999. They rounded it off. So because you're not going to have a partial wolf. So that means that there's going to be approximately 4,067 wolves in that Great Lakes area after 39 years. All right, questions now that just make sure when you're doing it with your calculator, uh, I wouldn't just do it on the calculator, I would also write it down. All right, double check it, make sure you write it down and then you can use the memory to put it in there because you saw when I first did it, that it didn't, I didn't do it correctly. Let's see if on this one, let's see. So what they expect us to do is put in the value and then hit the E of X. Okay, and that does it. Most calculators are gonna work like that. I'm kind of a bit, a bit used to the old Hewlett Packards that do it, what's called reverse polish. Not that that means anything these days. So just re remember, make sure you do it correctly in the correct order to get the value. And you can see it up there that it's telling that, that you did it, that it was E to this. All right. Like I said, I did that calculation separately and then double checked it to make sure it was right, the 1.2675. And then I brought E to that power. All right, questions? Because as like I said, that's a lot of, of what chapter four is about. Okay, it's just going to be evaluating these. So you want to make sure you do your work correctly. All right, let's see. Did anybody else come in? Okay, I got it right now. Somebody comes in late on oh, deal with that later. All right, so y'all okay on this? 
like I said, hopefully this part is fairly easy because it's mainly just evaluating things. Now you do have that translation, uh, transformation of the function, but they're not doing real difficult ones. So for the most part, it looks like they're, they're just uh, transforming on the back and forth on the left, right, or the up and down. And we'll look at a little bit of examples in a few minutes. All right, so let's get back and just go through the lesson here. All right, another one is co uh, called compound interest. Now, um, there's two different types of, of functions for compound interest, a uh, really important function, especially like in the business world, if you're dealing with finance and such and accounting. But um, depending on how many periods that you compound per year, usually I think, like I said, I, there's not much of this going on these days because interest rates are so low, but um, usually what they'll do is they'll like compound quarterly, like four, you know, four times a year, all right? And then um, the T just uh, stands for the amount of time the balance is in the bank. And then um, the one, well, let's we'll kind of how that works in. And then this is just the rate of whatever the rate is, like percentage, which you're going to use this as a decimal divided by the number of periods. And then, of course, you're going to multiply that by the principal because this part right here is going to give you the increase over whatever time period you've got at however many portals you, I mean, however many uh, times you're compounding. but something that's much better or more accurate. And I don't know if uh, that's probably what they do nowadays just because of computers, but you got this thing called continuous compounding. And this usually works out a little bit better, but the way it works is the amount that you're gonna have in the bank is equal to the principal times E to the rate of return times the minimum period, number of time it's in the bank. This one, we don't have to worry about the number of periods, compounding periods, because it's done continuously. All right, so let's just say a sum of $10,000 is invested at an annual rate of 8%. Now remember, you can't just throw an eight in there because 8% means 0 0.08. And it asks us to find the balance in the account after five years with quarterly compounding. And quarterly just means four times. So N is equal to four there. So we got everything and you know, we got to put the 10,000 out front. And then we got the one plus and we got the plus 0 0.08. And again, what's happening is the one is giving us our principal back. And then this part right here is giving us the essentially the uh, the you know, the increase at every quarter. All right. So uh, then the point zero eight up there, divide by four, and then all of that inside, and it's four times five. So let's just look at that. All right. So we got ten. Uh, Let's do the inside first, because that's going to be easier that way. I'll tell you what, let's work on our way out. So point zero 0.08 divided by 4. All right, so that's point zero 0.02 plus 1. So 1.02, and we want the uh, y to the 20, 20 4 times 5. So 1.4859, blah, 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 on and on. It's not going to be um, a nice even number. It's just going to be a continuous. We're going to round it off to money. We're going to round it off to, to hundreds. So times the 10,000. So that's the $14,859.47. So if $10,000 set in the bank for five years at 8%, which is highly unlikely these days, 
We'll probably get lucky to get half that, probably even less. For that five years, then there would be almost half, you know, gained. In other words, it's not quite 5000 but it's pretty close. $4,859.47 gets added to the principal. All right, now let's look at it in terms of continuous, continuous. All right, well, no problem. I'll just, uh, like I said, I don't like taking the role. If it was up to me, I wouldn't take it, but Delgado still has the policy. They want us to submit um, absences at the end of the year or attendance records. I don't use it. I mean, it's in the syllabus. I don't use it to punish your grade, but I do hold people responsible for anything they miss because, um, you know, there's no way I can relate it to you. Now, I try to make the recordings, and as, as far as I can tell, I've recorded all of these sessions that we've met, met. So you can go back and look at it, but you can, know, you can also catch up using the My Math Lab because you got information there. But I'm saying is that's the way I see it. Okay, so let's just go to the board and work out some stuff. I had some problems here that uh, I pulled from the book. All right, so uh, let's take that one out. Everything's like going pretty slow. I don't see my little, oh, it's way up there. I mean, I got a pretty big screen here and I just still don't have enough room because these things like the little controls cover things up. All right. So let's say we want to, um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go look at a book here so I can get the instructions. I wrote down the problems, but I want you to have the instructions on them too. Wait, I'm not in the wrong course. What's crazy about this course and why it sometimes throws me for a loop is because Math 130 is almost the same exact class, except for a few little things. And they cover this too, but it's called Chapter 3. And in your book, it's Chapter 4. All right, anybody got any questions? Hopefully these things will kind of explain any questions you got, because I'm gonna to try to do things that contrast what we, uh, what I showed you in the lesson just a few minutes ago. Like they gave you a whole number um, for the base. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to get one with the uh, a fractional amount. All right, so that's what we're going to do. And thankfully, the front, you know, the graphing is not a big portion of this, but they do want you to see what the basic function looks like. All right, so let's see, I think I had it. All right, we looked at one. Uh, it's very similar to 11 or 12. Uh, and, and these 13 and 14, those are still greater than one. So they're going to, go, going to more let's take that shape, same kind of shape. But let's look at one that's actually a fraction. Let's look at one half. All right.
So I'm going to take a little picture of this. And then I'm going to import it over there. I'm only going to deal with uh, the one number 15. But like I said, I, if you have the instructions, Okay, we're only going to look at this one. It's just kind of a matter of time because we got to actually put in some points and calculate. So let's do that. Well, it's actually, it's H of X. Not that that's that big of a deal, but all right. So what I want to do is I'm going to pick zero. I'm going to pick one. I'm going to pick two, and I'm going to pick negative one and negative two, and then I'm going to evaluate. So um, h of zero is equal to one half to the zero, which is equal to what? If you don't I quite know it, then let, let's watch. Is that one? Yeah, because all of them are going to go through one, zero, one. So if you put in 0.5, which is one half, and you raise it up to zero, so you get one, all right? So that's kind of a free point. H of one means we're just going to keep our base because it means that it's first power, which just means whatever the base is. All right, so let's do two. And just in case, what this means is it means that both numerator and the denominator get that exponent. It does not change the numerator because one squared is just one. Okay. So this is one half. This is one quarter. All right. Now what's what's going to happen? Remember how when we uh, did the one that was on the lesson there? Um, the negative ones made it fractions, and then the whole numbers made them large. This one's just the opposite because it's the one that's fractional between zero and one. Okay. Let's see, where did they say that? At? Yeah, here. See, so well, when B is between zero and one, in other words, it's fractional. <coughs> It's going to be symmetric about that y-axis. All right, so let's do h to the negative one. See, and what this is going to do is it's going to flip that fraction upside down. Just like before, when we just had the three. So this is just going to be two. Because remember, what does the negative do? Um, a to the negative one. Well, the negative sign does that just means so that's all it does. All right, the negative sign. So this right here, the reciprocal of one half is two over one or two. All right. And then negative two, it's going to. Do two things now. The negative sign is going to take the reciprocal, and then the two is still there to square it, so that's four. 
All right. Uh, and I wish this thing had some better drawing things, but I'm going to just do a rough sketch because that's what they asked us to do. All right. So, uh, so we got zero, one. We got one, one half. So right about there. And then two gets real close. And then over here, the negative one gives us somewhere right around in here. So that's two. Probably off a little bit off scale, but. All right, and then this is gonna be jump up to four. So four is right there. So then our rough sketch looks sort of like this. And then they say, use a graphing uh, calculator to see if you, if you did it all right. So. All right, it's. Uh, oh, there we got it. Try to get it in a bit closer. But you see how it goes through negative two is four. Negative one was two and one. This is one half and then two is one quarter and so forth. And then it's just going to get closer and closer. And then on the other side, it's getting higher and higher. And that's the effect of a fraction. All right. Now, um, Next thing we want to look at is just one of these transformations. Like I said, they don't do both. They either use the X transformation, and then, and like I said, that's the one where it's added and subtracted to X, and it shifts the opposite of the sign on the left or right. So if it's negative, it goes to the positive side. If it's positive, it goes to the negative side. And then the ones like this, where it's just added or subtracted, well, that one's true to the actual sign I means shipped up one. So let's just do uh, um, let's see which one. See, all they're asking is just to select it, okay? So um, We've got one here, the basic one. That's the one that looks like this, okay? Uh, it's actually not going through zero, one, so it's not that. All right, let's see if I can move out. So this one right here, let's see, this is one and three. So this one right here, 22, is f of three of x. Because see, we just had just done that one on here. Remember, that was this one. See, it's got one, three, zero, one, and then that's uh, negative one, one third. So this one, I'll tell you what, let me, uh, Over here, it makes it a little bit easier. All right, so I'm just going to write it on here. All right, so this is um, F of X. is equal to 3x, all right? 
because of the one, three, and zero, one. They'll all go through this. Now, um, this one right here, this, okay, let's see, let's look at this 21. This one right here is this one projected downward. In other words, this is negative. Remember, the negative gives us the mirror image. So this is f of x is equal to negative 3 to the x. All right. So this one is shifted down somewhat. And instead of going through 0, 1, it's going through 1, 1 right there. All right. So what this one is the one that we looked at in the lesson there that I just showed you. It shifted over one to the positive side. Therefore, it would be this one. This one is this one right here. That's that same one we kind of looked at. So this is three to the x minus one. See, because it's, the transformation is on the x, it goes one in the opposite direction of the negative one. And this is another one that's got a couple of things, okay? First of all, it's, okay, we already got rid of uh, this one. We got rid of that one. We got rid of that one. So this one has got to be a negative one. And also, the negative x is flipped around. So it's got two flips, all right? This negative x, all that does is you just turn this one around to the side and then the negative sign in front flips it down. So just like all the transformations we looked at, that's kind of how it works. Like I said, thankfully they don't um, give you one that does both, but um, I'll just show you one real quick because I want to get another couple of uh, applications. All right, let's just say, um, I'm going to put a, a whole number in there. All right. Now, if we change and we put the transformation, that's going to move it one to the negative side on the X. See the purple? Instead of zero, one, it's negative one, one. So I'm subtracting one, the opposite of that. If we put four to the X, and then let's say we add one, that's gonna go up now. See, it went up. So what my advice is always use the zero one, which is a common point to every exponential function as where you do your shift. Likewise, if it were four, minus one, it's gonna go down. See so that? Up one for the plus one, down one for the negative one. And then that one takes the original function, this one right here. Take these out to see. And it, trans it, it flips across the x-axis, all right. All right, let's uh, look at a couple of applications. Oh, we got time. Those are kind of, can be a little bit time consuming. I mean, the graph, it, the graphing is a, is a small part of it, but it's not the major part. The major part is doing the actual calculations on these things and figuring out what they are, but let's go over and look. All right, on the uh, book, All right, let's see. I want to do the delete when it's back on 54. All right. So let's look at this. I'm going to take it and put it over in the, uh, on the board there.
Oh, who who is iPhone? I forgot. I mean, I probably should know it, but it's a good thing to know because I just uh, saw the message and. So just type it in the chat so I know because I don't really have a clue offhand. And like I said, yes, during the, uh, this time of year, I mean, it's hard to keep up with. It. Even if I know something, I'll forget it. But anyway, all right. So we got three things to do. All right. What does semi semi annually mean? Right here. Twice, right? Okay. And then our rate. I'll tell you what, let's put the rate here. All right, that's important because remember, you got to use the decimal. See, and if you put it back one, two, see it's 6.5. So make sure you put in the zeros and all that, right? So now we're going to put all right, and then we got one plus point. Zero six five over two and then it's ten it's a period it's two times the period which is n is equal to ten. I'm sorry, not n is equal to ten. It's um t is equal to ten. And uh, let's see. They're given, and that's the formula that we're using right there. Okay, I didn't write it down, but that's it. All right. So when we do this, this is going to be equal to five thousand. And like I said, the way I would do it on my calculator is. Take the point zero six five point zero six five divide it by two. All right, and then add that to one. That's my base, and I'm going to raise it to the twentieth power. All right, so that's going to give us. Wait a second. Did I do that right? No, I should have done that. Times. So that gives us 9,000. So this right here is just going to be, what was it? It was 1.89. And remember, as far as rounding off, they say to go to the nearest cent. But always go a few places past what you want to round off to until you get to the very end and then round off. Because once you um, lose accuracy, you can't get it back. All right. So uh, uh, that's A, B, I'm gonna do it real quick. Let's see here. It's just kind of a pain in the neck with the mouse. Probably even if I had a touch screen, I don't know if it'd been better because I got a, had a touch screen earlier. And so the only thing that's gonna change is now this is quarterly. So it's gonna be four times a 20. So now 
it's four times 10 because this was a two times 10. All right, so uh, again, it's going to sl uh, ch slightly change because of the compounding. We've got 0 0.065 divided by 4 now, plus 1. And then we're raising that to the 40th power. All right, and that gives us 1.9 times 5,000. And notice it's not changing a great deal. But the more you compound it, the larger that number gets. And again, I'm going out past what I'm going to round out to, because if I were to just go out to a 1.9 and put a 1 there, then I'm going to lose some accuracy, and it may not match what the answers are. Yeah. Okay, and then this is... 95,027, and then round it off. The 79. So see how it's getting larger. And then um, if you count it, I'm not going to go through the whole thing because I wanted to do one more of the like, um, kind of well i don't know we might not need to worry about it i had another one here i wanted to do but we got four parts to this so i have to rush because basically they're all the same it's just you just pumping things into the x and then for this we've got various exponents that are changing and then we'll do it with the e function the e exponent All right, now it's 12, and then it's um, 10 times 12 now. Because remember, the T is 10, and uh, hold on a second. 2 times 10. So the T is 10. Oh, and the N is changing. So this was. Let me put this in here. This was n is equal to 4 if you didn't see it. And then this is n is equal to 12. So the t is always 10. I didn't write it there, but um, 2 times 10 is 20. So this is going to be 120 now. I'll just write it below that. So it's a larger power, but it doesn't change it a lot. Look at it. Okay, so let's look at that. So we got uh, 0 0.0065 divided by 4. Plus 1. There's our base. And we're going to raise it to the 120th power. So it's 1.9. One, two, one, eight. It's a little bit higher, but not a great amount higher. It's just showing you the effectiveness or how the compounding, the more you're compounding, the greater the total principle is going to be. 1.9128. And then what does that comes out to? That comes out uh, 9,560 now. See, each one's gotten a little bit higher in 92 cents. Okay, the last one's actually an easier calculation because we're using the uh, function over here, the uh, P-E-R-T. I, I, the way I always remembered that was PERT, that it spells PERT. All right.
Okay. So all I'm doing is I'm taking P times E to the RT. I don't have to worry about an N here because it's not being broken up into intervals or into um, compounding periods. It's compounded continuously. All right, so this is going to be 5,000. times E, the R is still 0 0.065. And now notice it's in this uh, exponent now, times T of 10 years. All right, so let's go ahead, back to the little calculator thing. Okay, there's my exponent. So I'm gonna uh, put it in the, the, let's see, wait a minute. I think they went like this, right? Yeah, there we go. So that's 1.91555. I don't know why I said is that I keep wanting to do it backwards because of the OHP calculator. 1.1, 1.9. 1 And then that comes out to 95 or 9,577 and 70 cents. And you see that that is more than any of the other ones because when you compound continuously, you're taking interest that you've already gained and immediately you know, putting it into the principal. All right, any questions? All right, so uh, just for time's sake, I'm not gonna fly through another one like this because these are really the pretty easy ones because all you're gonna do is just uh, You know, pop in something for x, multiply times that, take the e to that power, and then multiply times that coefficient. Okay, those are all pretty much the same. I really wanted to work this one because it had you know four different parts. All right, so uh, 